Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship today. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you who have gathered with us for our 11 o'clock service here in the sanctuary and also those of you who are joining us online. Together we are creating this unique and wonderful community of faith that gathers to lift our hearts, our minds, our voices in praise to God. Those of you who are reading carefully might see that your bulletin says 845 service. And that's because we had a switch this morning. Our uh, baptism that was supposed to happen at this service, the Fathers of Pilot, American Airlines changed the schedule. And so we had to switch and do that baptism at 845. And so we have just swapped our bulletins and we will worship God together today using this bulletin, even though it says 845. This truly is a unique and remarkable day um, here at Unity, and we are glad that you are all a part of it. Um, I invite you to sign the friendship pads, if you would. Those are found usually in the pews somewhere nearby you. This is a chance for us to know all those who gathered together for worship this morning. If you're a guest or a visitor, first a special word of welcome to you. We are so glad that you are here, that we might share this time of worship together. Also invites you on that friendship pad, if you're visiting with us, to include your name or your address, your email, perhaps a phone number or some other way for us to be in touch with you in this week that is ahead, just to say thanks for worshiping with us here at Unity. If you are looking for a church home, I do hope that you will find Unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me, speak with someone sitting near you or others that we might also follow up on that request. As, we, um, as you're filling out those friendship pads, just a few announcements, reminders of us for worship today. We are in our yellow protocols here in, um, for COVID community transmission, as, um, and you'll see that that means that the, every other row is marked off on the side sections. Those uh, working with children under the age of five are wearing their masks. Um, I'm wearing a mask today just because I've been around a few folks who have been exposed to someone who's tested positive, but no one with a direct connection or um, for me anyway. And so uh, just as an extra measure of caution, wearing masks when not speaking together this morning. I hope that you will join us as well on Sunday mornings during the Sunday school hour. We gather in the fellowship hall for our uh, Together Again Summer Fellowship at Unity. It's just a marvelous time to make connections with those across the congregation. And so come and join us for that time of fellowship as well. This past week was an amazing and wonderful week as we celebrated Vacation Bible School. It was wonderful to have it back on campus. The uh, whole church was full with, with excitement and joy, and you'll see a little bit of that a little later in the service this morning. But one of the gifts that came out of that week was uh, manna bags that were packed with food and other things that might be of help to those that you would encounter as you're driving around who find themselves in need. We have those for you to pick up in the narthex following the service today, and I hope that you will do, that, do so. And uh, special thanks to the youth who participated in the, um, in the mission camp as a part of Vacation Bible School for preparing those for us. Our men's breakfast will take place uh, this week on a Tuesday morning. You'll see an announcement about that. Next Sunday is um, Unity Family Fun Night. Uh, we'll be out on the front lawn next Sunday evening at 530. That's for all ages, so come and be a part of that. Looking ahead to July, Family Choir will return. We have change for the church, both offering and casual Sundays that will be a part of that month. So draw your attention to those announcements as well. We are coming to the end of our church fiscal year. And if you've not yet made your contributions or gifts for this particular fiscal year, I encourage you to do so before the end of the month. Uh, thank you for your generosity that has continued to sustain us and certainly Christ's ministry in this place throughout this year. And we look forward to finishing the year strong. So thank you for your help with that. One final word is that the General Assembly, which is our denomination's national meeting, began yesterday in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a hybrid meeting. Some of our commissioners are in person. Some of them are at home. And one of our own, Mark Ferdry, is a commissioner from Providence Presbytery. Mark's with us today. He'll be leaving um, later this week for his time in Louisville. But that meeting began this week, so just continue to keep that group as they discern uh, Christ's will in your prayers. Any questions that come up, please don't hesitate to let us know, and we'll look forward to seeing the ways in which we as a connectional church are making a difference in this world together. 
But let us stand and together join as we begin our worship with our congregational introit this morning as we sing together. Join me in the call to worship. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. We, we declare your steadfast love in the morning. It is good to sing praises to your name. We proclaim your faithfulness by night. For you, O Lord, have made us glad by your work. At the work of your hands we sing for joy. Let us worship God. this font for baptism and water flows down our heads, we are claimed as God's children. So we return here every week to be reminded that no matter what we do wrong or what we left undone, we are still children of God. So let us remember this morning who we are and whose we are as we join in our prayer of confession together. God of grace, we have harmed your children whom you love. Because we do not understand, we segregate, reject, demonize, and hurt. We fail to walk beside those who need your love. Forgive us in your infinite love, 
and teach us to welcome all of your children until our hospitality is as wide as your mercy. Help us to understand, to draw near, to lift our voices, and to love one another as you love us. Amen. Because Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, sin and death have been swallowed up. God's victory is assured. This is the good news upon which we stand. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. First scripture reading for today comes from the book of Job, chapter 16, verses 18 to 22. Let us hear this word of God. O earth, do not cover my blood. Let my outcry find no resting place. Even now, in fact, my witness is in heaven, and he that vouches for me is on high. My friends scorn me. My eyes pour out tears to God, that he would maintain the right of a mortal with God, as one does a neighbor. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, let me invite our youngest friends, the children of the congregation, to come and spend a few moments together here on the steps. We've got a special guest who's joining us together this morning that you might recognize from Vacation Bible School. Those of you who are joining us online, draw a little nearer to the screen so that we might be a part of this special time together. school this week. Some were and some were Those of you that weren't, you're going to get to have to sing one of the songs that we did when we were there as an echo song. So you can see what it was like and maybe you guys can come next year. Who remembers from those of you that were here, what was the name of our vacation Bible school this year? What was it? Food truck party. Very good. And we learned about a lot of ways that God and Jesus provided food for all of God's children. But what were some of the things we did that were fun? Did we make crafts? Did we play games? Did we sing songs? Did we meet DJ Cupcake? DJ Cupcake was our 
puppet narrator for the week, and he got to be a good friend of the kids. So some of the stories that we learned about were God providing manna to the Israelites, and Elijah and endless oil, and Jesus feeding the 5,000, just lots of ways that God's provided for us. And we also had a main course verse for the week. I'll give you a clue. It starts with give us. Who remembers what that main course verse was? Give us this day our daily bread. And that came from the Lord's Prayer, right? And we learned a song about the Lord's Prayer, which is an echo song. And the children are going to echo me, but we would like some help from the congregation, too. So Miss Jones is going to help lead the echo. And the kids, since we, the, the children were all of our chefs this week. So since you were such good chefs, you know all the motions. And you'll have to help us do the motions, OK? Are we ready? Let's stand up so we can do it. What everybody's doing, and you'll do just fine, okay? It goes like this Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, how awesome is your name! How awesome is your name! We make crowns, your kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Now all together, you ready? For yours is the kingdom forever and ever, and yours is the power forever, amen, and yours is the glory forever and ever, forever and ever and ever, amen. Thank you all very much for helping to teach the congregation with Miss Lynn and Miss Joan this wonderful song. Let us uh, close our time together with prayer. I'll pray a little bit and you can repeat after me, okay? Dear God, Dear God we thank you, we thank you for, music for music and song and, song and, joy, and joy and opportunities, and opportunities to, learn to learn about you. Help us always to remember, that you share to remember that you share with us so we can share with others. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming and being a part of this special time together. If you are headed out to nursery, you can head out. We've got lots of uh, good friends who are going to take you today or back to your seats as we surround you with our song of blessing. For the months of June and July here at Unity, we are exploring the Holy Spirit in a series that we are calling Empowered by the Spirit. And each week we will encounter the Spirit through a different biblical image. And today we turn to the Spirit as Advocate. So our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16. We'll read verses 4 to 15. This verse, or in this text, comes from the long discourse that Jesus shares with his disciples on the night 
of his arrest in Jerusalem. He's seeking to prepare his disciples for life without him, for life after his death and resurrection. Jesus has spoken earlier on this night about the Holy Spirit, called here the Advocate. But in our text for this morning, he circles back in a slightly different way. So let us hear this word of God. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray as we sing together. Last summer, almost a year ago, the extended Rich family got together for a week in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. My aunts and uncles, my mom, my brother, sister-in-law, and my nephew, my cousins and their spouses and their kids, and us, all of us together, we stayed in a big cabin on top of a mountain. There were 31 of us for at least some part of the week, and it was wonderful. With a group that size, with a collection of ages and interests, we only planned two sort of days where there were whole family activities, and the rest of the time was kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. Well, one of the days of planned activity was a day at the amusement park, Dollywood, and the other was whitewater rafting on the Pigeon River. Well, on the rafting day, we reached the river, and my Aunt Lynn and Uncle Bruce, my cousin Brenda and her husband Clint, and Sarah and I decided that we would raft together. Our guide gave us instructions for where to sit on the raft, how to wedge our feet into the gap between the side tube and the bottom as we went through the rapids, how to paddle, and how to never let go of the T-grip at the top of your paddle so that it didn't end up hitting your neighbor in the mouth. We felt fully prepared and ready, so off we went. 
Now, the summer after I graduated from high school, I worked for a rafting company in West Virginia. So I've been rafting many times. And yet the person who fell out of the raft, not once, but twice, was, yes, that was me. (laughs) One time we were floating in a calm part of the river, and I made a gentle paddle. As I reached into the water, my paddle became wedged between two rocks on the bottom of the river. Remembering never let go of the tea grip, I held on to my paddle as it remained stationary and the raft kept floating downstream. And so head first, I went off into the river. It was calm, and so everyone else in the boat started looking around like, where in the world did he go? Until finally the raft, the guide found me floating near the rear of the raft and pulled me back in. But you know what? I still had my paddle. (laughs) The other time we were in a rapid and the raft hit a wave or a rock and it knocked me off balance. But as I had my feet firmly wedged between the tube and the bottom of the raft, my feet and legs stayed in the boat. But everything else from the waist up was in the water. It was as if I was just laying there on my back in the water. And I distinctly remember thinking, I'm just going to lay here because I know that Clint is going to come and pull me in. And sure enough, after a few seconds, I felt Clint's hands grasp the front of my life jacket, and I was back in the raft. I just knew he was going to come. Clint was there, sitting in the front of the raft beside me. I trust him like my own brother. And so as I lay there, hanging from the raft, I wasn't worried. I just knew that he was going to come. I think that's a little bit of what Jesus promises his disciples. He's going away. There will be challenging times ahead, but the disciples will not be left on their own. No, the Holy Spirit will come. As he says earlier in the Gospel of John, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid because the Holy Spirit is on the way. Now, the word that Jesus uses for the Holy Spirit here in John 16 is parakaletos. It literally means one who is called alongside. Sometimes it gets translated simply as paraclete. In earlier Greek texts, the word signifies one who is called in to a person's defense or even a helper in court. And sometimes in scripture, it gets translated, therefore, as comforter or a counselor or sometimes just a helper. The New Revised Standard Version that I just read from this morning uses advocate. So Jesus is saying there's no need for his disciples to fear as he departs to return to the Father. For another will be sent Another who is called to come alongside as comforter, as helper, as counselor. When you are hanging out of a raft, you can trust that Clint is on the way. Yes, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, is coming. That's the general impression of the Holy Spirit Jesus shares throughout this final discourse in the Gospel of John. But here in chapter 16, Jesus adds an additional role for the Spirit when he says, and when the advocate comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Yes, the Spirit who's coming alongside comes alongside as the advocate, as one who speaks on our behalf. And yet now the Spirit is also like a prosecuting attorney one who will put the world on trial to prove wrong, or we could even translate it to convict the world for its incorrect understanding of sin, righteousness, and judgment. 
Biblical scholar N.T. Wright puts it this way, the death blow has been accomplished in the death and resurrection of Jesus, but this victory has to be implemented. That is the job of the Spirit. But we are not just watching from the sidelines. What the Spirit does, it does in and through Jesus' followers to hold the world to account, to speak truth to power. The exercise of this task is one of the Christian's primary spiritual experiences. We do not always connect those two, do we? Being filled with the Spirit and working for justice. But here in John 16, with the Holy Spirit as advocate, Jesus promises that when the disciples know the presence of the Spirit, it will be in conflict with the world's understandings of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yes, to advocate for justice just might be a spiritual experience. And that is perhaps a most fitting message for us to hear On this particular morning, on this day known as Juneteenth, you may know the story. President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st of 1863, declaring that all enslaved people were free. However, the word did not immediately reach all those who were enslaved. In fact, it took more than two and a half years for news to reach parts of Texas. On June 19th of 1865, Major General Gordon Granger landed with Union troops in the port city of Galveston, Texas. He announced the end of the Civil War and the enforcement of the Emancipation Proclamation with these words. He said the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. You see, the death blow to slavery had been accomplished two and a half years earlier, but the victory remained to be implemented until at least June 19th of 1865. My friends, that's something like the work of the Spirit, the Advocate, Disaster threatens, but do not be afraid. The advocate is on the way. As early as the following year, there were community celebrations in Texas marking this historic day, often including prayer services in the churches. As black people moved across the country and even around the world, Juneteenth celebrations were held in new locations. Many descendants of enslaved peoples considered it their Independence Day, and now for us it's a national holiday. As Presbyterian pastor Shania D. Leonard says, we should celebrate Juneteenth as an entire country, for it's a day that marks the official end to the darkest period this country's ever known. It's a chance to shout hooray, even if it's fleeting for one of the few times that black people were given a piece of what they were entitled to as citizens of this nation. And so even as we still battle racism, white supremacy, economic disenfranchisement, discrimination in housing, inequality in education, perpetual bigotry, racist policing, unjust laws, and a painful past, we still celebrate the hope of a tomorrow where the promise of equity, equality, and true liberation are perhaps achievable, or at least closer than they have ever been. My friends, on this Juneteenth, it seems to me that the work of justice, the need for the Holy Spirit as advocate to fill our hearts and our minds and our voices remains as needed and necessary as ever. So together, as we float down this river of life, I invite you to pay attention to those who are in your raft. For the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, has been called alongside you and me. 
And the advocate doesn't just pull you back in the raft when you're falling out. She fills you, she fills me, so that we might do the same for those who've always struggled to find a place in the raft with us. So let us climb in, grab a paddle, and be on our way together toward a future with freedom and true justice for all. To do so is a profound spiritual experience. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of grace, draw near to us as the Spirit. Draw near to us as the Advocate. Empower us that we might see and know that you are with us always. To come alongside in those places and times of great need. Empower us that we might come alongside others in their moments of great need. Until that day when your kingdom comes, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing scripture read and proclaimed, I invite us to stand that together we might declare what it is that we believe. Today we'll use words from the Westminster Confession of Faith as they are printed in your bulletin. The ability to do good works is not at all of themselves, but wholly from the Spirit of Christ, and that they may be enabled thereunto, besides the graces they have already received, there is required an actual influence of the same Holy Spirit to work in them to will and to do of God's good pleasure. Yet they are not hereupon to grow negligent, as if they were not bound to perform any duty unless upon a special motion of the Spirit, but they ought to be diligent in stirring up the grace of God that is in them. You may be seen.
Amen. Friends, all that we seek to accomplish, all that we strive to achieve, all that we claim to possess, without the grace of Christ, it amounts to nothing. But because the grace of Christ has been poured so abundantly into our lives, we seek to respond to that grace. And now we will seek to respond by bringing to our Lord the tithes and the offerings of our hearts and of our hands. So we invite you at this moment to prayerfully consider a financial contribution to undergird and expand the transformative ministries of Unity Presbyterian Church. There are many ways that your gifts can be given. You can do it online or by mailing it to the church office, by dropping it in the mailbox outside the historic sanctuary, or placing them in the offering plates that you'll find as you leave worship today. But let us remember that as we have so freely received, let us freely give. And now let us join together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, we come to you this day in a spirit of praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your promise to love us always and for your promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit abides with us as counselor, as comforter, and as advocate. Sometimes we think, oh God, that we have to do something to get the Spirit. Help us to experience that sense of peace that comes from knowing that we do not have to earn your love and grace by what we do or by what we say. Rather, the Spirit is a gift, a gift to all who are open to receiving your presence in their lives. Help us to remember all that Christ said and did, that we might be reminded of all that Christ charges us to do. We want to fulfill that charge, but sometimes our hearts are troubled, our minds unsettled, and our spirits are confused. Comfort us, quiet us, focus us, that we might rest in peace in your ever-loving arms. Grant us peace to entrust our lives to the guidance of your Holy Spirit, that we might not only see but follow your light. <laughs> Let your light shine on all those who struggle in darkness, the addicted, the homeless, the unemployed, the exploited, those in war-torn countries, especially those in the Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in Syria, and in Yemen. Let your light shine on all who are troubled and afraid, the sick, those who grieve, those in troubled relationships, those facing an uncertain future. Move us out of complacency through your indwelling spirit and enable us to minister to those in need and lastly, O oh God, let your light shine on us. Help us in the discernment process to know your will for our lives and give us the courage to step out in faith to follow you. When we hear your word to us, help us to embrace it and grant that we might feel in our hearts a peace that surpasses all understanding as we put our whole trust in your grace and love. Lord God of the Church, the General Assembly of our denomination has begun its biannual meeting. Inspire those of us who are commissioners, 
not so much with the grandness of it all, but with your Holy Spirit that inspires such grand ceremony. Deliver us as commissioners not so much from controversy, but from the narrow vision that sees no faithfulness in those of differing opinions. Fill us commissioners not so much with jealousy of opinion, but with the burning desire to do your will in matters large and small. We continue now to pray with one voice that prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
My friends, as we go forth from this place, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. May we be empowered by the Spirit, the Advocate, who comes alongside, draws near to us, so that we might do the same for others. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen.